Let us share our call to worship found on page 597. 597. It's selection number 49. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, even then will I be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that I will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle will he hide me. He will set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let us gather together to confess our sins before God. Let us share the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. We love your church, Father, because we enjoy its security in a life of insecurity. But even within your church, we experience fear when we give thought to the tremendous forces which sweep over us as if we were defenseless. Forgive us when we have surrendered our faith to the forces of evil. Keep us mindful of your presence and power that we may rejoice with you in the victory of your church. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. For the assurance of pardon, I'm going to tell you a story that I was told when I was in Sunday school longer ago than I'd like to admit, but this story means a lot to me. At the end of the service one day, an elderly gentleman stopped and said to the pastor, I have been talking to Jesus this week. And the pastor, being young and green and inexperienced, thought that the man was taking leave of his senses. In other words, he didn't believe him. So the pastor said, well, if you talk to Jesus again, ask him what sins I committed this week, and if you get them right, I will believe you. 
The man, slightly broken heart, hobbled home because he had not been believed by his pastor and friend. Two weeks later, when he was back at church on the, on the way out, the older man said to the very inexperienced pastor, I talked to Jesus again last night, pastor. The pastor, smiling to himself, said, And what sins did Jesus tell you that I committed this week? The older man smiled with a twinkle in his eye and said, Jesus told me to tell you this. And the pastor stiffened. There was a long pause, and then the older man said to the pastor, Sir, Jesus said two words, I forgot. Let's sing the Gloria together. We have gathered here together to share a laugh and a story, to be together, to sing, to dance, maybe, to do things new and do things old. In all these things, we invite you to take part. Teach us how to dance new steps, God. We are ready to learn. Amen. Please be seated. My name is Ralph Gonachellis, by the way, and I want to tell you how happy I am to be with you this morning. Is this enough volume? Can, every, can everyone hear me here? Everybody's kind of spread out. We'll have to fix that, and we're going to fix that, I think, very soon. I've changed the scriptures this morning because somehow it got a little lost in the blender. This morning's scriptures will be from Romans and the Gospel of John. And if you'd like to read along, I will be using Romans 5, 6 through 8, and 15 John 9 through 17. From Romans 5. While we were yet helpless, at the right time God Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps a good man, one will dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And from John 15, 9 through 17, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is my, this I command you, to love one another. Such are the readings for this morning. May God's wisdom and insight warm your souls. This might sound a little ridiculous, but I'm feeling like a lost child right now in that um, I'm not familiar enough with your worship service and I've just realized that I squeezed all the scriptures together. I want to apologize for that. What I said was I'm lost. And uh, it's, it, it, I'm thinking here how easy it is for, for me to fall into the way that I've always done it. And when I run into a new worship service, I kind of feel a little awkward. I just want you to know that. And right now, I'm not exactly sure where we are. And I wish somebody would tell me, where are we? Hot dog. Second question is, where is it? Not in mine, it's not. In the hymnal, and it's where? I'm going to get Stephen for this. In the very front, before the content, very first page. Somebody gave me a Bible with, you know, the hymnal with a peace tank. Thank, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. I also see we uh, we just blown by one of the hymns. Now we just sang. I'm sorry. We did. Thank you. Oh God. Let's stand for the statement of faith and get back on track. Let us say together: We believe in God, the Eternal Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our Father and to his deeds we testify. He calls the worlds into being, creates man in his own image, 
and sets before him the ways of sin and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to share him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his kingdom which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. God, we are believers, yet we find it difficult to pray and to know you. We would like help so you could be, more, be a more real relationship to us. Would it be all right to think of you as we think of our own selves? Are you outside physical creation? In the same way, we transcend our bodies and thoughts, self-evaluations, dreams, and memory. We are not limited to our abode, in, for in thought we can be anywhere. Perhaps you are inside creation, in the way we permeate and influence our own body. Could this be so, and yet infinitely more so? We like to think of you as the spirit of love, the wisdom of meaning, the conscience in consciousness, the justice in truth, the holiness in beauty. Where these are, you are or have been. I think Jesus sums up you best, God. In fact, we cannot really think of you without thinking of the love like Jesus' compassion, like his spirit. Our faith and knowledge of Christ seems to begin and end in him. And since we know your son, we know you too, and God, we feel very good about that. Amen. In fancy I stood by the shore one day of the beautiful
And I felt I could love him forever. So gracious and tender was he. I claimed him that day as my Savior, the stranger of Galilee. I heard him speak peace to the angry waves of that Turbulent raging sea, and lo, at his word are the waters still. This stranger of Galilee, a peaceful, a quiet, a holy calm, now and ever. Myrick, I am green with envy. That's right. As you can probably tell when I sing, I stand away from microphones in the interest of everybody here. But I envy you your, your musical ability. I want you to know that. Welcome. Do I do this concerns now? You do. I do. It's hard being the new kid on the block. Know that? Do I read these? No. Great. I'm going to tell you who I am anyway. As I told you before, I'm Ralph Gonancellus. Ralph will do. Why my mother ever agreed to change her name has always bewildered me in these 38 years, because her name was Rogers, and it was always easier for me to spell that than it was to spell Gonancellus when I was growing up. I guess a little bit of history and then we can talk some more later. I am chaplain at the Rosewood Center in Owings Mills, if you know where that is. All of my folk are mentally retarded and developmentally disabled. The highest mental age at Rosewood is about nine years old, and I have people on my wards who go from the ages of six and too well into their 80s. Besides that, I am also the chaplain for the Arlington, Virginia Coalition for the Homeless which is a very different type ministry than parishes are. And it is from that experience that I try to grow and change and be with you. But like you all, I have other things. I have in-laws and outlaws and all kinds of outlaws as well. And hopefully we can talk some more at the end of the service, if you wish. But I intend to do something during the sermon time that you might not have done, but I think you're going to enjoy, or at least the church last week did. I bid you welcome. I'm happy to be here. I'm starting to understand the worship service, so my anxiety is going down. I do appreciate your indulgence. And one thing, madam, I need to tell you, right here, you look so much like Mrs. Dilzer, my third grade Sunday school teacher, that I thought that's who you are. 
and I love Mrs. Dilzer very, very much. Yes, you, right over here, right there. You have the same face, you have the same hair color, the same nose, and the same kind smile. And I want you to know something else too. Mrs. Dilzer, when I was 12 years old, when I was confirmed, and she asked, uh, she asked all of us, what do you want to be? And my confirmands said they wanted to be teachers and farmers and firemen and homemakers and, you know, mud pie makers, that kind of thing. I said to Mrs. Dilzer in my very squeaky 12-year-old voice, I want to be a pastor. And everybody laughed in that confirmation class except Mrs. Dilzer. You look just like her. Let's share our gifts and graces with the Lord by taking our morning offering.
you said. Told you I'm gonna do something new. What other thing? 